Hello everybody and welcome to my cooking channel. What you're making Dave? Today is going to be a quick one. We're going to make a meatloaf, some gravy from scratch, do some nice sauteed vegetables, and we're going to hop right into it. Everything's been prepared. All the recipes will be listed below. We're going to put in the potatoes. They will take about the same time as the meatloaf. I'm going to start a roux in this pan in a bit. I'm going to add a little bit of beef base to some water to start the gravy. So we're going to now start with the meatloaf. I've got some chopped garlic, some lovely bell peppers, an egg, and a few spices. Everything will be listed. We're going to put the egg in, the peppers, the garlic, a little bit of black pepper. So we're going to mix in all the spices. It'll just take a couple of seconds. So basically I've just shaped it in the bowl. We're going to put it into the baking tray and form it up a little bit better. And I'm going to wash my hands quickly. Tie her up, put it in the oven. Oven's on 400. All right, we're just going to wrap this little one up. Just like so. And here's a little trick I'm going to show you. A lot of people might be opposed to doing it, but it will prevent your meatloaf from burning and be extremely juicy. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the baking tray while it's in the oven, which will prevent any burning. Uh, be very careful if you take it out, there's still water left. It's going to be super, super hot, and that's how a lot of people hurt themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw the meatloaf into the oven. The oven's warmed up at about 400 degrees. It'll be finished in about 30 minutes. We can pump it up a little bit more. What we're going to do now is we're going to start the roux. We're going to add a little bit of oil. Not too much. Because we'll be more like the crazy French. In Paris, we'll add some butter. A little more butter. Some people say, oh my goodness, too much butter. Um, I say, oh my goodness, not enough. And stop using the packaged gravy. So we're going to let this melt really quick. The reason we put the oil in first is so that the butter does not brown or burn before we put our next item in that basically makes your gravy. And I don't know if you've uh, ever made gravy from scratch really quickly, but you must cook the flour. You can't just throw the flour in and not do it properly. And basically we're going to season this roux to really enhance the gravy. So we're just going to throw in a little bit of flour here. Don't need much to do what we're doing. We're going to add a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of garlic, and please don't add salt. They're salt in the beef paste. So basically what we're going to do is, we're just going to keep moving this around and cooking it. Basically this is our flavored root, which will create our gravy. Potatoes are boiling. It's all about what you put in and when you put it in. Turn your phone off for the day. Enjoy your family. Spend time with loved ones. So we're going to do this for a whole bunch of... Uh, more seconds, aka a couple minutes. And you will see it change color and the roux is ready to cook. Homemade dinner. 30 minutes. So if anyone has any requests for my next video, feel free. To say something, comment below, like it, don't like it, 
But if you notice, the roux has started to change color. Oh, very interesting. Happens almost immediately. And then you know you're almost ready to go. It will change texture one more time. Which is the last stage of the reel. I'm just going to leave that but turn up the heat just a little bit so it starts to bubble. You don't want to do this too hot or you will burn the roux. And uh, if that's what you're going for, cool. But uh, I'll pass on burnt gravy. So I'm going to check our potatoes. To see if they're done yet. Almost done, just another couple seconds. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them off, let them finish cooking, bring our lovely roux up to temperature, and in about 10 minutes I'm going to turn my oil on, put a little bit of garlic, a little bit of spice, it's a Something that I've been using a long time. It's going to bring out some really interesting flavors and colors in the vegetables and switch it up a little bit for this evening. More of a Mediterranean flair to it. And there is our last color change. You can see it happen almost right before your very eyes. So just another couple more seconds. Starting to get a little bit thicker. You don't want to get it too thick because then it will be gloppy. Um, a lot of the high-end chefs uh, will put it through a chinois. But uh, as you can see, I've done it small batch. So everything is very smooth. No gloppy. No glop for you. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the flavored roux into the lovely beef stock. A lot of people will reduce bones and yes in the commercial setting that's what I would do but this is a quick one 30 minutes. So basically I'm going to take some of our roux and drop it into here while stirring. Don't add too much just a little bit by a little bit and watch it thicken. You'll get the hang of it. My measurements will be pretty close. You don't want lots of, lots of wastage. And you also don't want to use it the next day. So it's better to run out. Especially when you're running a commercial establishment. So what I'm going to do is just finish that off. And start mixing as it comes to a boil. It will basically solidify right in front of your eyes and you will have a very rich and flavorful gravy to go on your lovely mashed potatoes and meatloaf. So our gravy is almost done. Another couple seconds. And we're going to remove that from the heat just for a few minutes. I'm now going to drain the water in the mashed potatoes and we'll be back to show you how to put the mashed potatoes together really quickly. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of butter. So a little bit of cream and we're going to warm up the cream because we don't want to put a cold liquid with a hot solid. It'll make it curdle a little bit and change the color of the potatoes and you want them to be really light, white and fluffy. When you put something cold with something hot, you're not going to get that fluffy texture that you're looking for. So while this comes to temperature, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so what we're going to do is now that we have the cream and butter warmed up, we are going to put our mashed potatoes together. And 
I use one of these things. It's fairly quick for me, especially doing small batch stuff. And I make quite a mess when I'm making the potatoes, but it's all about having fun and loving what you do and producing a quality product. Almost done. I'm going to do more of a smash. Doesn't need to be perfect. And the whisk helps whip. And that's going to be absolutely. Whoops. Oh, there it goes. Yep. Thank goodness. Somebody else is closing the case. We're going to put a plate over this. Let it sit for a minute. Keep it nice and hot. And now, on to the vegetables. Quick saute. So what we're going to do is we're going to warm this pan up. It's got a little bit of oil. We're going to add one of my secret weapons in my arsenal, and it's a flavoring oil. I'm not going to tell anybody exactly what's in it. But you could probably try to take a guess. Good luck. I'm only going to use one spoonful. So we're just going to bring this up to temperature. And I can show you guys again. What a beautiful gravy we have made very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the vegetables now, now that the pan's nice and hot and do a little saute. Do a little saute. Make a little dinner. Get fed tonight. Get, get fed tonight. Just let me saute this for another couple seconds. Turn it up high and we will be ready to plate. Okay everyone, final plating, trifecta, meatloaf, vegetables, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and make a comment. Here you go, hon. Mm -hmm.